Hey, you! I need you to hit that subscribe button. Subscribe. We live in this life for real. I know I know still. We on the front line, we know it's one time. Earning them strikes for real. Living my faith and not by sight, my light shine bright for real. Now I'm shining like a light, it's power and it's might for real We living this life for real, I know I and steel We on the front line, we know it's wartime, earning them strikes for real Living my faith and not by sight, my light shine bright for real I used to be a sinner, now I'm shining like a light, it's power and it's might for real uh, I'm a warlord like Joe Ab with a King James and a notepad Earning wages with a holy bag, I'm turning pages to my toe is tagged Heathers broken like Kit Kats, scoffers watch like six packs On the marriage, can't hit that I tell truth of my tribe line Broke the news, my eye was blinded Now I'm marked, I'm signed crying Made of gold, I'm bending steel My iron is sharp, my flesh is killed Every knee got a bend and kneel When death destroyed, all is fulfilled Live righteous or die trying I tell truth of my tribe line Broke the news, my eye was blinded Now I'm marked, I'm signed crying We live this life for real I know I and steel We on the front line, we know it's wartime. time Earning them strikes for real Living by faith and not by sight My light shine bright for real I'm shining like a light, it's power and it's might for real. I see what time is this? It's not even 12.50. All right, check this out. Genesis chapter 25 verse 21 uh -huh. and Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife what does it mean that he entreated the Lord I don't know I'm okay I got you entreat the Lord means you, you went to the Lord in prayer you prayed to the Lord read because she was barren and the Lord was entreated of him so the Lord the Lord the Lord heard his prayer his wife was barren she wasn't able to have children. So her husband prayed to the Most High God, and the Most High God blessed her and allowed her to have a child. Read. And Rebecca, his wife, conceived. She got pregnant. Read. And the children struggled together within her. So the two children struggled in the womb. Read. And she said, if it be so, why am I thus? So if this is a blessing from the Lord, if you had to go to the Lord to allow him to bless me to open up my womb, why am I going through so much trouble with my pregnancy. Right. Read. And she went to inquire of the Lord. So she prayed. Read. And the Lord said unto her, uh -huh. Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people. So the scripture says, Two nations and two manner of people. What does that mean, Jay? Two different people. So would they act the same? Would they look the same? All praises. Meaning what? They're what? Are they identical twins or fraternal twins? Fraternal twins. So it's going to be some differences in their physical characteristics. Is what the scriptures is telling us as well. Read. Shall be separated from thy bounds. Uh -huh. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people. So one of those nations was going to be stronger than the other. Read. And the elder so the shall serve. So the scripture says that the oldest, the elder, the oldest shall what? Shall serve the younger. So now we need to find out who's going to come out first. Because the Bible says that the weak one is going to come out first. And he's going to serve the younger one. The younger one is going to be stronger. The older one is going to be weaker. Read. Verse 24. Uh -huh. And when our days to be delivered were fulfilled. So around nine months, right? Behold, there were twins in her womb. And we already established that these are fraternal twins, right? They don't look the exact same. Read. And the first came out red. What does that mean? The first came out red. Came out red. I mean, came out, that, from, from what I say, in my understanding, that just because it say he came out red, don't mean that he came out white. Because you got you got you got ruddy looking brown skin that look red too. So these people over here, what color are they? Pale. 
Are they white? Yeah, white. But did they not white? Right on, on sign, yep. See this right? This is white. Do they look like that? What, what can you see? What can you see through their skin? You you saying you saying that they read. That's what you're saying. What's this, the scripture says that these people are red. So what other people? What color is blood? What do you see through a Caucasian skin? They, you see that blood. That's what you're. That's what you're looking at when you look at them. You're not looking at white. You're looking at skin can be, you know, they, if you don't have uh, melanin in your skin, you can see through it a little bit. Right. So when you see through their skin, you're seeing the same color that your blood is. Read it again. And the first came out red. You ever seen a a, a, a newborn baby, a newborn so-called Caucasian baby? Yeah. What you got right there, officer? Oh, baby, baby. He saw the baby. Yeah, some, somebody pull up a, a, a newborn baby, newborn white baby. So what you Some crying, man. They, they crying. <laughs> yeah, somebody pull it up. You, you got that? Yes, sir. And I want to see it when you pull it up too. The scripture says that the first came out red. Let me see. You see that, Jay? That's 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 when the scripture say the first came out red. That's a physical depiction of what scriptures is talking about. Because the first man and everybody else that came after him was made from the what? Dust of the what? Right. That ain't red. That's right. So everybody on earth looked just like that. The whole reason a color is denoted here is because this child looked different than every all the other children that were born on the earth. That's right. Can you receive that? Yes. All right, read it again. And the first came out red all over like in a hairy garment. Red and hairy. So it's going to start to give you physical descriptions of what this particular child and his offspring would look like. Right. Red and hairy. Read. And they called his name Esau. Esau. Esau, Esau, Esau. So Esau is the child that came out red. The child that came out red and hairy. There's still some more ex explanation in there. Keep going. And after that came his brother out. And his hand took hold of Esau's heel. So his brother came out. They didn't say anything about his brother and what he looked like. Why not? Go back to Genesis 2 and 7. Hold that. Go back to Genesis 2 and 7. This is the reason why they didn't say anything else about the complexion of his younger, stronger brother. Read. Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. Read it out. And the Lord God for man, man, all men, read, of the dust of the ground. And what color is the ground? Right. So God already established what everybody else is going to look like. In Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. Right. So now when we fast forward to Genesis chapter 25, and please, and you understand that there were more than just Adam and Eve on earth, right? Okay. All these people, if, if they look different, the Bible would have made record that all these people look different. But the Bible made record that all these people were made from the dust of the ground. They were all black. Right. So that's why when you get to Genesis 25 and 25 again, it says what? And the first came out red. This one came out red. All the other ones look just like Genesis 2 and 7 that we already established. Right. The dust of the ground. But the four, our forefathers made note that this particular child mm -hmm. came out looking different. That's right. Everybody else was brown. This one is red. Ruddy doesn't mean red. Ruddy. You got the definition of ruddy? Check this out. So, so when you... Uh, Hold, hold that real quick. Give me a second. Give me a second. I, I know where you would get the understanding that ruddy is red from. Okay. Give me a uh, whole Genesis 25. Go to Isaiah 20. And somebody find where David, King David, was, was ruddy. Oh, yeah. I'm going to bring you the scriptures first, and then I'm going to give you the support and claim. Because I want to show you how to get the proper understanding of the scriptures. Read. Isaiah chapter 28, verse 10. Uh -huh. For precept must be upon precept. Give me verse 9. Isaiah 28 verse 9 uh -huh. Whom shall he teach knowledge And whom shall make to, Excuse me And whom shall he make to understand doctrine So the scripture asks a question Who is God going to allow to understand This book right here Read Them that are weaned from the milk You remember what we talked about earlier Desiring the milk, the basics So in order to get the understanding of the higher level things 
you must understand the milk. Right. The remember the Sabbath day. The don't eat the pork. Do you eat pork? Okay, good. Do you eat shrimp, crab, lobster? What made you stop eating those things? There you go. There you go. So in order for you to get the understanding, you got to be weaned from the milk, meaning that you'll be introduced to the milk and you'll start to grow. You see what I'm saying? Your understanding will start to elevate. Right. Read. And drawn from the breast, for precept must be upon precept. So the scripture says that you get understanding precept upon precept. Read. Precept upon precept. Uh -huh. Line upon line. Line upon line, meaning what? I may go to uh, Isaiah chapter uh, 63 to get some understanding on like the kingdom or something like that. And then I may go to chapter 60. To get, uh, 63 is going to tell me what's going to happen before the kingdom gets established. And chapter 60 is going to tell me what the heathens are going to do in my kingdom. Right. You see what I'm saying? Right. Precept upon precept, line upon line. Keep reading. Line upon line. Uh -huh. Here a little and there a little. Here a little and there a little. And what does that mean? You remember, you, you were here when we went through the color, the people of the, bo of the book, right? We went to Genesis 2 and 7. We went here a little. We went all the way to Revelation. There a little. It was in Job 30, 30. Here a little. We were in Acts chapter 21. We were there a little. So you go throughout the book to explain the book. Right. You see what I'm saying? A lot of times the confusion comes in when we step outside of the book and we use all the other resources. Anytime you see us step outside the book, it's going to be to support something you can already find in the book. Right, right. So go back to the Song of Solomon 1 and 5 and come up, come up. Come and read that for me. So King Solomon, I'm sorry. Who was, yeah, who was King Solomon's father? King David, right? So we're going to go back to the depiction of King Solomon. Song of Solomon 1 and 5. Song of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 5. Uh -huh. I am black. I am what? I am black, but comely. So the scripture says, I am black, but comely. And then we're going to jump there. So that was here a little. Right. Now we're going to jump there a little to look at King Solomon's father. Check this out. The book of 1 Samuel, chapter 16 and verse 12. Uh -huh. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ready and with all of a beautiful countenance. So the scripture says Solomon's father, King David, was ruddy and of a beautiful countenance. Ruddy and beautiful. What did, what did, <laughs> what did verse 5 say? Bring it out. I am black, but comely. Hold, hold that. I got to show the correlation. I want ruddy and beautiful. I want black and comely. I was what? I am black, but comely. That was King Solomon and his father was what? Now he was ready and with all of a beautiful countenance. You see that? The scriptures are saying the same thing. Ruddy and black is the same thing, just like beautiful and comely are the same thing. Right. You follow me? So ruddy, if you step outside the book, it may tell you, oh, ruddy means red. No, ruddy means uh, a beautiful countenance. So you ever seen a brother with like acne and stuff? That's not ruddy. And then you look at like a child, for instance. A child's skin is like flawless. That's what ruddy is. And then you grow up and you still got a countenance like that. That's how King David's countenance was. It was black and it was beautiful. Right. So scripturally, ruddy means beautiful, a clear complexion. Here's a supporting detail. Read that. This is the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary. Uh -huh. Page 510. Read. Ruddy. A word used to refer to a red or fair complexion uh -huh. in contrast to the dark skin of the Hebrews. So the scripture says that when ruddy is referred to the skin of the Hebrews, it's talking about a dark, beautiful complexion. That's right. Outside of the scriptures, someone may use uh, ruddy to refer to someone that's reddish. Right. But the scriptures, um, read that, it's another word in it. Ruddy, it says a, a, a light and what? A word used to refer to red or fair complexion. What is fair complexion? What does the word fair mean, Jay? If, some, if I say someone is fair skinned, what is that supposed to mean? Somebody define fair. Johanna, look up fair. Fair definition. Mm. Check this out. This is one of the definitions of fair. Read. Fair definition. Pleasing to the eye or mind, especially because of flesh. Charming or flawless quality. You see that, Jay? The word fair is supposed to mean beautiful. 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 
But what, what white society has done, they've taken fair and made it equivalent to white. Right. A light. Like a light-skinned person they call fair-skinned. Because we're saying that that person is beautiful. It doesn't really have anything to do with the complexion of the skin. What we're saying is that person has a beautiful complexion of skin. Right. So when you read Ruddy in the scriptures, what it's saying is someone is fair-skinned. They have a beautiful countenance. Read that part again. Ruddy, a word used to refer to a red or fair complexion. So a fair complexion is what I'm trying to explain to you. It doesn't mean that somebody was uh, literally red. It means that they had a fair complexion. I got you. So Jay, so Jay, the scripture says that Esau, Esau would be red. King David was ruddy. So what's the difference between the two? King David was what? He, he was what? He said And what does ruddy mean? King, King, King Solomon was King David's child, right? And Solomon was black and comely. So that means King, King David's ruddy skin was what kind of skin? Black skin. There you go. Black skin. Okay. So it's a difference between the ruddy that you read about at King David and the red that you read about with Esau. It's not the same thing. Right. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.